you know, all all week long, I've been just it's. Uh, well, it took a shooting massacre in Texas to get Kevin Spacey off of the headlines, and I I just I mean I I write about the news. I do four columns every week, and I've got to read this garbage. And it felt to me, no, I made some, pre- the first week, there was only one revelation. It was just Anthony Rapp. And I said, we've got to forgive Kevin Spacey and redeem him. Like that's what we've got to, the, the church has to sue for redemption. Redemption is the Christian message and the Christians have to do redemption. That's, that's the thing. If the, if the redemption people don't do redemption, then they're not the redemption people anymore. That's, That's Apple that no longer does software or hardware and tries to sell pencils and change in only one day. I mean, that doesn't work. I mean, how many, how many countries, companies, how many businesses, how many governments, how many families, how many institutions fail because they stop doing what they are supposed to do in the beginning? And so my point originally was and still is the religious right has to argue for Kevin Spacey's redemption. You don't have to let him off the hook. They don't have, I mean, redemption doesn't excuse people. Of course, they don't excuse anybody. Why would they? Why would redemption let someone off the hook? Why would redemption excuse someone? So when you're out there and you hear people talking about this and that and the other thing, you know, think what you want. But when you're talking with a Christian or if you overhear a Christian at the coffee table next to you, Christians believe in evangelism. So if a Christian is talking about his Christian ideas and he's at a table in a coffee shop and you can hear him, you are automatically invited to talk to him. Because of his religion of outreach. They believe in outreach. The New Testament is all about outreach. The majority of the New Testament is letters trying to reach out and communicate to people. So if you hear any Christian talking about Kevin Spacey, the only acceptable thing is something that involves redemption. And to say that redemption is to let him off the hook, well, that that person doesn't understand redemption. Redemption means that someone else is on the hook. He's got, you've got to do restitution. You have to make wrong, break the the wrong right. Whatever you did wrong, you've got to make it right. You have to make it right, of course. But that's part of redemption. You don't just burn somebody alive. So there's a lot. I mean, I I, and I'm, I don't want to parse it and I don't want to get lost. I've been reading these articles from Spacey and I'm, I'm exhausted. It was depressing for me, folks. Just so much bad news. And I, I just, I can't I was reading it and I was trying to understand what in the world was going on with this guy and what was in reading this story and that. And I just, and I've, I've written the afterthought, you know, my little would be uh, syndicated 400 word column, uh, which I, I started a few weeks ago. I've, I've been, I've been reflecting on that. There's some lessons to learn from Spacey, but I'm sick of it. I'm done. I, I I'm to the point where I kind of don't care what the news is going to be anymore. I mean, follow this. Understand this, follow this idea. Kevin Spacey, with the help of the mass media as his accomplice, myself included, has, have molested the minds of the entire country with these stories of what's going on. I mean, why is it that Americans just love to read about someone else's dirt? Are we that distracted from our own lives? I mean, come on. We knew what was going on in Hollywood. Why are we shocked by the revelations of the obvious? No, I, I, uh, this, yesterday I got a new phone. If you've been following me on Instagram, which you should, you've seen the, the new, the new phone pictures. Exhausting. Why, why is it that, that when you, when you, I mean, getting a new phone's like getting a new house. Oh, I mean, it happens a lot quicker, but it's like, ugh. I mean, you lose the password for this or you, you know, you whatever. Okay, so I get an email back because, of course, I'm involved in everything that I do. And the Ubuntu discussion groups are talking about Ubuntu discussion stuff. And one of the things that they're discussing is the stuff they're discussing. Anyhow, I made a point to everybody. You know, we need to focus on the substance. We need to focus on on, on a software program that's strong and does what it's supposed to do. Not so, not be focused on, it looks pretty. It looks so pretty. We need to focus less on making it look pretty and just make it strong. And get out of the, make it look pretty business, unless you're going to charge money. If you, if you want, you know, make strong software, 
But if you want to offer, there, there are things out there that make Ubuntu look pretty and they're, they're nice, but they're all free. And it, I, and it, pardon the geekery here, but there's a, there's, a, there's a teachable moment in this. Even if you're not a computer code guy. There are two major parts to any computer program. What's under the hood and the shiny, pretty bodywork. Think of it like a car if you have to. Now, there's lots of pretty shiny, you know, the, the Windows do this. You know, what makes Windows XP look different from Windows 7 and Windows 8 and stuff and, and 10. There's, there are things that make, you know, what uh, iOS looks different from Android. Uh, Samsung looks different from Sony in some ways, although it's Android, it, it looks different. There, there's, there's the body work, the paint job and stuff. And, and with Ubuntu, with, with a, lot of, a lot of Linux distros, Arch, uh, Fedora, which, you know, Fedora CentOS, you've got, oh, okay, oh, Sousa, I'll throw in that too. So you've got, with Linux operating systems, a lot of the body work, the pretty, pretty stuff is free. And what, what are the Linux developers mostly divided about? What do they complain about each other and do their little church split and start a new congregation, so to speak? What do they do that with most of all? With the free, pretty bodywork. And my point this week was, unless you're going to charge money for the free, pretty bodywork, don't complain. And a lot of Linux developers, myself included, we don't know how to charge money for stuff. We want to make something that's awesome. We're idealists. We make something and we just want to give it to the world because we love people. And we make money helping individual customers, but our general work is, is free to people. So I, I said, you know, if people are so worried about the pretty shiny, the fashion, the coolness, charge money for it. Otherwise, get out of it. And I, that was a few weeks ago. And I got an email back basically with a standing ovation. He, I mean, he quoted what I said. And he said, standing ovation. Get, get out of it. If you want it, maybe we should charge money. Well, I mean, you know, there, there's, there's basic needs, necessity, and that needs to have a freemium model. Now, listen to me on this. I don't know what you're doing. I mean, even, even big business works with a freemium model. There's something about the three Ps or whatever jazz they want to call it. But it's like they go in with, with like help the community, like, like a big company like Coca-Cola could be. I don't, I don't know if they do this or not. They probably do or they wouldn't survive. A lot of companies Go in with nonprofit to help the community pay for, you know, whatever textbooks or something or help educate people, pay for midnight basketball, whatever. And then they have their company where they employ people. And, and there's these two arms. It's, like, it's, 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 it's big business, freemium business model. You've got to have, you've got to have the help people side of what you do. And then you've got the make money part where, where you make profit, but you also create jobs, no profit, no jobs. The same part of the business that creates jobs is the same part that creates profit. And then out of that, you have to have charity of some kind. It's part of your freemium model. It's part of helping the community so that, so that the people, your customers, your employees can keep living or else it shows over. So that, but, but my, my point is, if we're going to worry about, we want our computer to be pretty so we can look at it and it's fun and pretty and nice to use, you got to pay money for that part. That part has to be part of the money. We can't have luxury quality products in the stuff that's free. It, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. You can't put the luxury stuff in what's free. So I know this might have been a little bit ramblish, but if you listen to it a few times, there, you know, that... There's really some useful stuff in here, but I've got to focus on other stuff and I need to get to the point. What did it feel like when Jericho's walls fell? Either you were the enemy inside, the enemy outside, or the harlot who helps the spies. Boom, everything falls, dust everywhere. Is there time to worry about what the guy next to you is doing wrong? Do you still have the luxury of pointing your bloody finger at the hypocrite you chose to live next to? No. When the defenses are down, the enemy charges... Everyone runs wild. All you can do is hold your own. That's recompense. Whoever did whatever wrong, victory goes to whoever minds his own affairs best. And that's the point. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.